Hello and welcome, everyone. You are listening to The Crack. This is the podcast where I ask you, what's The Crack? So, what's The Crack, guys? Get in touch. Let me know. I'll share it with everyone else. And we can become the little sharing community, our little commune of sharers. But how have you been? How are you, listener, the individual, you personally? Take a moment to think about yourself. How are you getting on? You being good to yourself? Are you treating yourself in a way you would allow others to treat you? You know what I mean? If you weren't you, if you were a friend on the outside seeing somebody treat a friend as you were treating yourself, would you put up with that? Hope you're being good to yourself. Hope you're getting plenty of water. Especially with how warm it's been lately. By warm lately, I mean in the last two days. I can assure you, we have no hair. You really feel the weather. <laughs> Hope you're good. Hope you're doing everything you can out there to do what you can to have a easy going, happy life. Maybe not easy going. Maybe some people strive for constant improvement. Whatever's going on. Hope you're well. Yes, so, first thing you may notice, this episode is hella late. Yeah. Um, you want to know some truth? I'll tell you the truth. You can't handle the truth. No, I can't. I'll let you know what's going on. Nothing dramatic. Uh, this is not the first time. Sorry, I'm just moving some cables around here. This isn't the first time I've recorded this episode. No. No, 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 no. There's no technical issue. Everything worked fucking perfectly, if I do say so. I'm starting to get the grips with this mixer and the microphone and all the wires and all that stuff. Apart from me apologising one moment ago for having to move the wires. But no, technically everything worked fine. Um, so when I listened back to it, or even before that, as soon as I finished, as soon as I hit the... Talk to you next time, guys. Bye for now. As soon as I finished, I leaned back in my chair and... <sighs> Lewis, man, your energy was off. I didn't dig it. So I listened back to it and... It was a bit cloudy. You know what I mean? Not depressing or anything like that. You know, it's not like a... Oh, Jesus, what's wrong with that guy? No, um, energy was off. It was a bit negative. But, uh... A bit doer compared to my doer normal self, and quite mean spirited at times. Now I have a pretty dark sense of humour, but I don't like to think I'm a nasty person. Um, certainly have been. <laughs> um, but I think being ashamed at your previous actions means you're improving as a person. It doesn't justify being a bad person, but to identify that you were, and to strive to never be like that again. Yeah. Fuck's that outside. Oh, big wasp at the window wanting to come in. Hello, wasp. Yep, no, nope, he's not coming in. It's closed. We're closed. So, yeah, so we're going to try the episode again. Um, uh, <laughs> It's going to be weird, because um, obviously this morning I listened back to what I recorded and didn't dig it. So, we'll start again. So, what's going on? Right, well, I am sitting in a very well-organized, very clean, very nicely hoovered, very polished room it's the spare room this is the office the podcast studio the room of quiet contemplation this is my room in the flat the other day because we're young and hip and you know we don't have any kids yet not that she's pregnant but you know the hell are you talking about get to the fucking point right okay anyway i took charlotte for breakfast because we we're just so sex on the city no so we Oh, there's the fucking Mexican co-host making her presence known. Maybe she'll come through. Back to the breakfast chat. So we're out for breakfast in Nairn. Fastest town in Scotland. Nairn? Yeah, that joke had to be done. Or I could mention Charlie Chaplin used to go there for his holidays. But then you might wonder who Charlie Chaplin is, which is quite heartbreaking, but time goes on. It was 100 years ago. But anyway, right, right, right. No, when he went there on his holidays. Jesus, no, but you know. It's a long time ago he was around. Right, so he we went out for breakfast and I'd driven us, so I dropped Charlotte off at her work for half eleven. Yeah. And then I came home. Great story so far, Lewis. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Now, 
the spare room, if you listen to the previous episode, you've heard me talking about the pile of coats on the floor and the suit that needs to be dry cleaned. That suit is now back in the little suit carrier case. I'm going to go and take it to a dry cleaner, so I don't know how to do that. I don't know where you go. I think Timson's do that, but he just sort of, hey, can you clean this for me, please? I don't know how they do it. Spray it with chemicals. Dry chemicals. And I think Charlotte actually needs to go and get a few dresses dry cleaned. Anyway, so what's my point here? Came home and did it, did it, did it. Yeah, this coat hanger to my left. Jesus, a scattered brain cunt. No, it all comes together, I promise. Let me take you back a little bit. <laughs> okay, let's focus here. So, small flat, me and Charlotte, okay? She is a woman. I'm a man. Therefore, she has all the space in the wardrobes. Naturally, that's how it goes. So my coat's sort of accumulated in the spare room, piled up over chairs and over bags and things. When we first moved in, there was a row of pegs. I don't know what you call You know, like a cloak room at school, the cloakies. You got the you know, your wee peg, you put your jacket on and your bag and things. I think coat hooks are what they're actually called. So at the top of the stairs, there was coat hooks on a strip of wood screwed onto the wall. So Charlotte put all of her coats on there, and uh, and she kept putting her coats on there. And then eventually one day, poof, down they fell. Ripped out of the wall, straight out of the plasterboard. So me, being a man, got a drill. Back up it goes. I didn't put any kind of bearings in, so maybe a day later, poof, ripped out of the plasterboard. I was like, oh, right, okay, maybe you don't just quite literally just drill screws into the wall. There's maybe a system to this. So, do you hear the aeroplane, guys? What a world we live in. Just tubes of metal flying thousands of feet above our heads. Filled with folk. How weird. So the coats lay on the floor at the top of the stairs, like some sort of corpse. And mine went to the spare room in a pile on the floor. So I went up to B&M or Home Bargains or one of these wee sort of home base type shops and I bought a very cheap we're talking maybe £12 coat stand and it was once you clipped it all together and thump, pipes into the pipes and screwed it all it was like three different tubes long tubes you know you're talking maybe six feet tall in the end um, that clung together and then due to the way they came down a tripod at the bottom you know there was the three tubes were the legs so I hung all my coats up or hanged, no, hung, hung it out. And that was fine, they were all standing there. And then, just as nature allows it, slowly the woman's fashion found its way onto my coat stand. So maybe it started off as just a hoodie, and then there's a coat, and then a second coat, and then suddenly some scarves. And then before I knew it, I came in one day, and my coat stand had collapsed under the weight of our combined jackets and coats. Bother, said Lewis, looking down upon the coats. So they 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 lived on the floor for a while. Now, I went onto the internet and I found this wooden one, and it looks like something from like a Victorian parlour. But it arrived. I bought it and FedEx delivered it, and that was all fine. And have I ever mentioned I work night shift? <laughs> yeah, I got up in the morning and I was going about my day, and just around noon I went to Charlotte. Okay, I'm going to go back to bed and try and get a nap. Okay, cool. Literally, as soon as my head hit the pillow, it was dun, dun, dun. Rawr, 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 rawr. Fucking Mexican going nuts. FedEx with the flat pack. So I assembled. Avengers! I assembled the coat stand. And. Yeah, I'll just tell you the truth. I thought I was doing a good job until it came to the point where you have to put it all together, if that makes sense. So you start off, it's. The main, don't laugh, the main shaft up the middle um, is three different chunks of wood that you screw together. And what you do, let me just adjust my posture here. It's like I'm giving you a pep talk in some sort of like locker room. Sitting leaning forward, elbows on the knees, hands clasped. <laughs> if you can see what I'm saying. Probably looks like I'm sitting in a public toilet. I don't, you know, sort of hovering. No, um... 
kind of put it all together and had the legs attached. And I was like, okay, so then you screw figure C into figure D. And I'm all right, cool. Well, um, well done, Lewis. You put figure C on upside down. You've screwed everything into it. So the legs were upside down. Or the middle was... Essentially, I totally fucked up. So I take it all apart again. And I was wanting to get to sleep. And I was like, rest assured, guys. The world keeps turning. Life goes on. It's all fixed. It's all sorted. And to my left right now, I can proudly boast... All of my coats <laughs> are hanging up. And some of my hats are on there, and it's a poncho. But then my other poncho, yeah, I got two ponchos. <laughs> Don't you? Uh, the other poncho is on my golf bag. There's no golf clubs in it, but it's a golf bag. Uh, that's the poncho I got in Mexico, and the other one on the coat rack, that's the one that I bought on the internet. Which, yes, is the same one Clint Eastwood wears in the Dollars Trilogy. Because, of course, I'm going to wear that when I watch Westerns. So, we got home from dropping Charlotte off at the breakfast, and I'm back in the room, and the coats are hanging up on the thing. And I'm like, okay, let's give this room a good clean. And this is the room with all my books in it. Now, I've got books scattered around the flat. I've got them in a wee bag that I keep in the car that I take to work. Um, there's some down the side of the bed. There's some in the living room. You know, like just number side of the toilet. I know not a toilet reader. That's where the good Lord invented phones. Now, if you want me to do something in particular, say you wanted me to go and change a light bulb, okay? You don't come in and say, Lewis, can you change that light bulb? What you do is you come in and you go, Lewis? Yes? Would you mind unblocking the sink? Yeah, of course I'll do that. Because I have this thing, and I've had it my whole life, and I don't know, I can't focus. I, like, I'm aware of a task needing done. When I do something, I don't do it. I'll fucking, I'll do everything else. Honest to God, I will fucking rewire a plug before I pair my socks. It's uh, very frustrating because I really get things done even though I know I need to do it. Like, this Legends of Lore. Oh, I'll talk about that later. So I came to do the books. Rearrange them. I collect the other books in the flat. I put them all down. Put them alphabetized. Author, surname, order of fucking release because I'm sad like that. Instead of taking two hours, it took me eight hours, guys. Charlotte was home by the time I was finished. But the books were organised. Some things are binned, not binned, but I've put them aside because I have more than one copy of some books. I don't know how that happened. Floors hoovered. My desk is organised. Filing cabinet needs work, but uh, it's actually a friend from work. If you're listening, hello. She's going to come around at some point, hopefully, and I'll buy her some snacks and she can organise my paperwork because. I do like this filing cabinet. I need to get more magnets for it. I use the side of it as a, you know, like a whiteboard. I don't write on it. Like a like a cork board with magnets. It's probably called a magnet board. So there you go, guys. The room's organized. Take solace in that. <laughs> oh, just drop my pen there. Jesus. Yeah. I need to get more magnets. So, that's Legends of Lore business. It's getting there. Like I say, I'm scatterbrained. I'll start writing it and then I'll... I'll be like, mm, is that how you actually spell... I don't know. Cleffington. It's Google. Cleffington. Next thing you know, I'm looking up homes for sale in the fucking Greater Murray area. And I'm looking up the history of the Murray estate. And I don't know. Just focus, you prick. It's getting there. After this, today, after this episode is recorded and edited and uploaded and all that jazz, I'm going to gonna get back on that. I'm actually getting close to finishing the first draft. But last night, I uh, took the wee dog for a walk at the battlefield, as usual. Um, lovely night, lovely peaceful night. Just a few other folk up there. Tourists! You can tell by their cameras. And they brought a tripod. Not something I would do. Take a tripod. Who am I to judge? Still gonna, but, you know, not me. And then, because we needed to go and get milk... Because, you know, life goes on. It's me it's a podcaster, guys. <laughs> it's not all rock and roll, you know. I put on my trousers one leg at a time with the rest of it. We had to get milk. And instead of just going into Tesco on the way home, I said to Charlotte, it's a nice night, let's go for a drive. Hidden agenda. I kind of wanted to drive the way the Jacobites would have had to walk to Nairn. Because, believe it or not, the road that is there now is very close to the road that was there at the time. They just, over time, adapted it and put tar on it. I don't know if you've seen photographs of some roads in England where they've lifted the tar and dug down and there's the like Roman <laughs> the Roman cobbles and things like that. Like it is it's the same roads. 
They got it right, so they kept it there. That was my point there. Yeah, fucking focus, Lewis. Um, so we're taking this lovely little drive to Nairn via the back road, and um, it's not a euphemism. Arrive at Sainsbury's, not Morrison, Sainsbury's, and look at my wee phone when I get there and plug it from the car. Because, you know, that's what I play Spotify through. And there's a wee blue bar at the top. I'm like, what's it? What's that there for? That was my Strava. I put it on. Like, every time I go for a walk, I put on the Strava. But I keep it private because the world doesn't need to know how much I walk or how little I walk. Um, but the poor app thought, well, Lewis, you really, you really dropped a gear and fired off there. Yeah, I thought I'd walked like 15 miles in about 10 minutes. So... It's going to skew my numbers. That's all right, that's all right, that's all right. We'd actually been for a walk in there in the week before. That was how we ended up. Whoa, everything comes full circle. That was how we ended up going for breakfast at that place. So it was a day off we both had off together, which we don't always get just because that's how the fucking universe works, guys. And I decided I want a cheeseburger. Or, you know, I want lunch. So we went out to this... When I was a wee boy... It was a farm, and when we visited Nairn, it was on the road to Grantham. I think it is called Grantham Road, or Grantham Way, or something. No, it's just a farm. And now it's been all spruced up, so it's, I'm pretty sure it's still a farm, but you can go there, and there's a wee cafe, and there's a shop that sells, like, you know, side tables, things like that. And a wee farm shop that sells black pudding, and jarred olives that you never see in Tesco. You, I know you know the type of shop I mean. Packets of crisps in bags that you can't really open easily. Shops not for the common people. Mm -hmm. So, we went to this wee cafe. It's fucking delicious. It was absolutely incredible. Delicious burger. Absolutely, like, just lovely. Um, Proper butcher quality burger. You know, some places you go and it's just a sort of standard... No, this place, oh, it was good. Uh, Charlotte got the chicken. But it was like, it was, it's called popcorn chicken, but it was cooked in a certain style, like Louisiana style or bio. Cajun chicken. She got Cajun chicken poker, um, which she got off the small part of the menu because there's like a sharer's appetizer's part. And at her work, you can buy popcorn chicken, but you literally get like a tiny little amount of popcorn chicken. Sort of like KFC. But what she ordered and got was like a full portion of chicken, so I don't know why they put it on that part of the menu. It was lovely. I tried some, of course. Um, but that burger, I'm going to keep going back to that burger because it was something else. Even the, you know, the coffee was nice. Cause I'm trying not to drink fizzy juice. I haven't had any fizzy juice since the wedding a few weeks ago. Oh, I have to talk about that, Jesus, yeah. Anyway, 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 anyway. After the lunch we had, we went to take the wee dog for a walk, and if we're in Nairn, we usually go to the beach. Um, But it was the afternoon, uh, which means it'd be busy, and it's the end of that time of the year where a lot of folk holiday in Nairn. So instead of going to the beach, because the dog doesn't get on with other dogs, we decided to go and explore the woods. So I drove along the road towards Grantown, and we just found a wee place to pull over. And there was like a Forestry Commission gate. So there's like an actual road in the woods. So I parked in a, parked in a very respectable place. You know, plenty of space. And we went for a walk. And me thinking I'm fucking on a Schwarzenegger and Predator. I was like, no, no, no. We'll just, we'll just follow the path. We'll just go. I know where we are. I didn't. So I put Strava on. We kept walking and get to like a crossroads in the woods path goes left, or it goes ahead, or it goes right, or we can turn around and leave. Let's walk forward. Okay. So I march on, going straight ahead. Do, 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 do. Well, did I fuck up. Whew. Brambles. And we're wearing summer clothes, because it's very hot. And, yeah, getting jabbed and cut and scraped. And My ego wouldn't allow me just to be like, okay, let's go back. Let's go back. I fucked up. No, kept going. Watch for over a mile and a half in the woods, and then I looked at the Strava, and I was like, you've done that mile and a half. Okay, let's turn around. Let's just go back. Charlotte was grateful, and the wee dog was not happy. She wanted carried. She was just, she was done. I was like, well, we can leave you here. She's like, well, fine. No. She could just fucking walk. No. Well, 
How are you going to get back? And that sounds like a you problem, Lewis. Well, so I carried the wee dog back. The lazy little fuck. We lived. Lesson learned. If you fuck up, Lewis, just admit it and turn around and walk back again. They wouldn't allow him to do that, though. Not my ego. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. So that was the walk in the woods. Um... Now we've had a bit, not a fallout, we've had a bit of debate in this flat. The wedding I was at last week, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. The most recent wedding. Essentially, if you went, you were gifted a little thing of jam. It all makes sense in context, but I'll just, you know, we got jam, okay? So, a little known fact about me, guys, I fucking love jam. Strawberry jam, love it, love it, like love it. So I was delighted to receive this little jars of jam, and then because I was heading back up to Inverness, and that's where the bride's parents lived, and they were taking home some stuff they brought down for the wedding. I said to the bride's parents, "Look, I'm going to Inverness on my own. My car is empty. Is there anything you want brought up? Put it in my car." <laughs> yeah. Um. So I took home a few trays of like flowers and some holes and stuff and I dropped it off at their house and when the bride's mother came out she said, you want any more jam? And I was like, fucking do I? Yeah, so um, I had a shed load of jam. I'd say shitload, but I'm being respectful to this stuff because it's delicious. So I've been eating a lot of toast lately. No. No. <laughs> no. When I eat toast, guys, and the way I've always eaten toast, if I'm making it myself, I put the bread in the toaster. It goes down. He comes up toasted. Now, whatever level you like your toast, I don't care. You know, if you want it fucking bendy, you go ahead. You want it overdone, you go ahead. I let it cool. And then I spread out my butter. So you always get a layer of butter. It's not melted in the butter. It is visible. There is a layer of butter. Not too much, but it's there. Like a... Like a base coat, you know what I mean? Like, let's say you're going to paint the door red, you put down that grey layer. Same thing with the butter. Now with the cool toast and the butter spread, I will then put on what's on top, which in this case is jam. Or, if it's chocolate spread, I'll put on chocolate spread. But I always put the butter down first. Whoa! Charlotte disagrees. Charlotte likes to have the butter melted into the toast. So she'll toast it, it becomes butter straight on, melted. Okay, now, if she's having jam, she doesn't put down butter. If she's having chocolate spread, she doesn't put down butter. To her, butter is the topping. But butter to me is not the topping. Butter to me is the the bed in which you lay the topping. Now, sometimes, yes, you just want the bed. So I would just have butter toast. But I will always put down butter first now. I'd be polls onto the Instagram account because we just could not agree on this. And some people, I'm sorry to say, are wrong. Some of you out there eating toast the wrong way, guys. So here at the Crack Podcast, we fully advocate letting your toast cool, get that butter on, and then put whatever you want on top. All right. So sorry if you disagree. I'm sorry you're wrong. But then some folk were like, you're overthinking the, the butter there. And then I had one message from Ailish, long-time listener. She's the first person to ever send me, uh, well, send me, to send the podcast a gift. I've still got it on the shelf there. The avocado book. She sent me a message explaining when she's having just plain butter toast, she has to catch the toast at the perfect temperature. So it's melted, but she likes to still have a like an island of butter on it. Like... She wants it soaked in, but then she wants a little bit to remain, so you can still see that chunk of butter. I'll end that one there, because I don't want you to be, you know, fizzing at your phone right now if you're listening to this. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's listening right from the beginning, giving my first feedback. Her and Sarah. Back in Tesco, a long time ago. Uh, speaking of feedback, I found the part on the website where I can find the American iTunes feedback. So it's, uh, it's an ego boost to receive feedback from somebody in America. But I shall get on to the next point. I've been meaning to. I got an email. I got an email 
from Spotify. Spotify email me. Hey Lewis, how you doing? No, they didn't. It wasn't that friendly. Um, apparently, apparently, which I did not know, after the podcast finishes on Spotify, that's what you're listening on, hello, it asks a question. What did you think? I didn't know that. And some people have answered in the past, but they had never told me. So I got this email, I was like, well, there's people on Spotify who have been asking your question. Why don't you check out? I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me this? It's been going on for a long time. So the second most recent one, I'll answer now. If this doesn't make any sense, it's because you were not the one that answered. But my order in the Chinese <laughs> was, yes, sometimes Singapore Chinese. It was usually chicken fried rice, extra spicy. So you remembered correctly. Okay, next point regarding the wedding episode. Because last week you got, or just over a week ago, you got two episodes. You got the episode and then you got the bonus. Some folk didn't care for the sentimentality of it. That's fine. I've set a standard on this. We don't talk about feelings around here. I didn't take that personally, but I got a message on Spotify. Um, I could open my phone and read it. I'm not going to, but it was saying, no, I enjoy this. It's cute. Some people like talking about more sensitive things. This is a safe space, guys. It's 2024. Safe spaces. You know what I mean? It's a liberal. It's a liberal arts college ground over here. Okay? You know. Be free to feel how you want. Um, the folk that gave me the feedback saying too sentimental. I didn't take it like, oh God, the folk that gave me talking about feelings. I just understood. All right, not everyone's taste. I put the bonus. So, I'm not, not going to talk about feelings on this podcast and sentimental things, but um, at the same time, where I come from, we don't really talk about feelings or show emotions. <laughs> you know, like when I went through to, to Grand Town, I was visiting my parents and my dad asked how the wedding was. I was like, oh, it's very nice. You know, and I told them the sort of similar thing I told the podcast. I was like, oh, was, oh the break came out and, you know, fucking beautiful and stuff. So sort of gave me a look like, you know, fucking, you have a girlfriend, Louis, don't call other women beautiful. Um, was, oh, and then, the, you know, the groom saw her and he, he actually, I think he teared up a little bit seeing his bride. Why? What do you mean, why? You know, why was he crying? Well, he wasn't crying, it was just he was overcoming the emotion. Oh. My dad, I've never seen my dad cry. <laughs> I don't know if he can. Um, I've never been at a wedding until the one I went to where I'd seen people crying and stuff like that because it's just different, different environments, different orbits and stuff like that. So some of the listeners to this come from that orbit where that sort of sentimentality doesn't uh, doesn't really happen all that much. So, thank you for the feedback, guys. Don't worry. You can show feeling around here in this very clean, organized room. Because I'm gonna. I'm gonna fucking weep at how clean this room is. So fucking organized. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's going on elseways? I think that's it for this week, guys. Um, sorry for the delay. Oh, no. <laughs> Got some big letters here. Did anyone else watch Eurovision? We can talk about that next week. If you have any thoughts about Eurovision, fucking feel free to email them in. All right, because we will read that out. We don't have to get political, because Eurovision isn't about politics. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. But I do believe, guys, I do believe... In the Loch Ness Monster and in Bigfoot. But I also believe I'm going to call it there. And I believe in you. Alright, even if you don't. So we'll call it there, guys. Uh, this is another week. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. It genuinely means a lot to me. As does the word plethora. So, if you want to get in touch, and absolutely please do, whether you want to be in touch about uh, Eurovision, what your thoughts on that, where we're ABBA, um... Whether you want to let me know how you're feeling. What's going on in your life? You got any news? Is it your birthday? Is it? I've still not had somebody email and say happy birthday to themselves. I want to, I want to read a happy birthday shout out on this. I've had congratulations to pass out, but I've never had a birthday. I know there's fuckers out there changing age. It happens every day. Every day. Anyway, guys, right. So if you all get in touch, check out the website. www.thecrackpodcast.co.uk now say it again www.thecrackpodcast.co.uk go to the contact <laughs> how do you get in touch go to the contact tab 
put your details, ping it through. I'll receive it on this end, and I'll read it out on the podcast here live from the spare room that's organised and clean as fuck. That the Chihuahua pissed in last night when she found a clean patch on the floor. Anyway, thank you to Blackmill for the theme tune. Thank you to Coda for your artwork, for the logo design. Thank you, dear listener, as I said, for your time. It's very much appreciated. And until next time, guys, be good to yourself, take care of yourself, you know, try to eat clean, (laughs) drink water, get some sleep, look after each other, don't take any shit, but just be good. All right, I'll speak to you next time, guys. Bye for now.